few weeks later, a gravid taipan finally enters a deep crevice. She's looking for a place to lay her eggs. It must be secure, not too wet, nor too dry. Taipans are egg layers, but a few species bear live young. The advantage offered by egg laying is the shorter time the snake needs to carry the extra load. She tests the earth. It has to have just the right texture and moisture content. Egg laying works well for snakes in warmer regions where temperatures are close to perfect for incubation. In colder regions, live bearing works better to overcome the hazards of longer incubation periods caused by the lower temperatures. Once she lays, she leaves. A bulk supply of expendable eggs and young replaces parental care. Meanwhile, 1,500 kilometres to the west, another kind of taipan is searching also for a special place to lay her eggs. This is the inland taipan of arid Australia, the most venomous snake on earth. There are two taipans, the coastal and the inland. Rediscovered in the late 1960s, it took many years for science to agree that it was a taipan at all. Finally, the snake of many names, including Paradomancia and Fierce Snake, became the inland taipan. The female inland taipan enters a disused rat burrow. She makes the choice after days of searching. It's the best she can find. She knows she has to lay her eggs now. She's detected a drop in the air pressure and not far away, the life-giving rain is sweeping in from the west. Boom times are ahead for everything, including the taipans. Nearby, Rob Breddle, the barefoot bushman, meets his old friend John Robbo Robinson. Robbo also is in the zoo business and shows snakes on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Both are out here to look for inland taipans. Both are unaware that the rain is coming, and a lot of it. How are you? Things you see when you haven't got a gun. It's a worry, eh? It is, mate. So what you doing? Same thing you are, chasing fierces. I thought you might have been. Yeah. So you set up yet, or no, you I'm just not got just here? Getting here? Just got here. Yep. Um, well, I'm set up down at Kadapan. I'm in the ringers' quarters. Nice, cosy little cabin. If you want to join us, you're quite welcome. I think that'll be great, mate. Okay. Well, okay. Great. The first of the rain front shadows the vast inland plains and signals thousands of female taipans deep underneath the parched crust to begin laying their eggs. More than five years can pass without rain out here, so the wet's always crucial to all creatures' survival. If the taipan's lucky, then the moisture from the approaching rain will sustain her eggs for the two to three months until they hatch. The shells need to absorb water from the air and ground for the young snakes to develop inside the leathery cocoon. Ideally, the eggs are swelled and almost bursting when the babies are ready to hatch. If the eggs are in the wrong place, as thousands will be, they'll fail. Some will drown in the coming deluge, while others will simply dry out too quickly. If she's chosen the right place, not only will it be neither too wet nor dry, but the right temperature. 
As they develop, surface temperature will soar to 50 degrees or more, far too high for anything to survive. Survival is a gamble, and to improve the chances, the snake simply lays a lot of eggs. When she's finished laying, the female will leave the eggs, never to return. The rain comes, and it floods the desert. Rob Breddle and Robbo Robinson are flooded in for several days. Are you sure this is the desert? Well, the other 51 weeks of the year it is. Well, it looks like we're stuck here for a while, eh? Yeah, certainly are. Early next morning, Rob notices the sand dune peppered with newly dug burrows. When the conditions are right in the desert, you can even find frogs. This is a water holding frog. When it rains, they come out, they breed, they feed, and take in water, bury down again. They can be down there for even up to a whole year. And the Aboriginals used to use them for getting water. So it's getting up and squeeze them. They can actually go down to the ground up to a metre or more. Luckily this one's only a shallow one, it's just past the elbow. Sort of reminds you of something out of Star Wars, doesn't he? As the swollen creeks push their waters across the sodden landscape, Rob and Robbo see what's been flushed out. Driven out of the deep cracks in the earth by the cold flood water, the inland taipan becomes the first catch for the two bushmen. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Beauty. Beauty. Also flushed out and searching for dry ground is one of the main prey items for the inland taipan. It's a plains rat, a delicate native of Central Australia. These little rats are the main prey item to the inland taipan. They're ballerinas compared to the sumo wrestler rats and bandicoots of the coast. And it's this what makes the inland taipan different from the coastal taipan. It's a much less formidable animal. Life in arid Australia is boom and bust. With the rains come the rats. Evidence of the boom is well hidden underground during the heat of the day, but after sunset, the inland plains awake. Native rats, like the plains rat, have allowed the inland taipan to prosper in isolation from its coastal cousin. Because the rats out here are different from the ones on the coast, the inland taipan is also different. These native rats have evolved to survive the extremes of their El Nino driven climate. The El Nino produces irregular extremes of wet and dry. So they live for years without water and with little food. But after good rains, the rats breed rapidly into massive populations. The flickering tongue tastes the minute particles of scent. A special organ in the roof of its mouth, Jacobson's organ, processes the particles. 
This snake is programmed genetically, so if it likes what it smells, it must be a rat scent. It will follow the trail relentlessly, no matter how faint. There's a confusion of scent trails left by the family of rats, and the snake will not find their burrow easily. Only when it gets close enough will the fresh, airborne scent tell the snake exactly where the rats are hiding. It enters the rat burrow, blocking the entrance with its body. Now we see how the inland Taipan uses its arsenal of weaponry. Its tactics are the same as used by its coastal cousin, but with one important difference. It bites everything that moves, but unlike the coastal Taipan, doesn't retreat from the burrow. This enables the inland Taipan to maximise its opportunity. Such is the nature of these rats, they're unlikely to bite back. The incredibly toxic venom works rapidly. Now the inland Taipan can consume all it can. In this boom and bust environment, there's no certainty about the next meal. This may be the last opportunity for months, and it could spend years with only a minimum to eat, hanging on until the next rain brings the inevitable hordes. The rain has moved east now, and after three days of waiting, the barefoot bushman and Robbo decide to break out. I reckon we might do it, because if you get into the creek down there, it's pretty solid, and we might just push you away like we did the other one. Up and back, because it's down here, Leo, it's probably going to get back all right. I think we'll give her a go. You first. Dread make it. My go. The two bushmen head for a camping spot on hard ground closer to the inland Taipans, but the country remains treacherous and unpredictable. Robbo's about to find out the hard way. Hey! I'll stop while I can still open the door, eh? I 
on the hook. No laughing matter, mate. Yeah, <laughs> oh dear me. What are you doing? <laughs> I actually didn't think I was going to get out for a second. <laughs>